Hello, it's Helder here, and the season has finally changed, summertime is upon us, and it brought up a few questions from my Natural Training Center members. Uh, basically, they were posing to me what contents, if any, in my go bags would change from the winter and fall season to the summer season. And when I went ahead and took some inventory, I realized that I do shift out a bunch of items. Now, once again, the majority of the items in my go bags stay exactly the same, but there are a few key items that I do swap out so I don't end up carrying dead weight and at the same time have the uh, gear that I need available to me to operate in the proper climate. So what I want to do today is make this accompanying video to an article that I just wrote on basically contents of a summertime go bag. So let's go ahead and get started. First item that I want to talk about is a water purifier. Now generally I do carry a personal water filter with me uh, in all of my go bags for doesn't matter what season I'm operating in but in the summertime I tend to consume a lot more water I have my dogs with me I have uh, other natural training centers uh, members with me uh, working on their skills trekking out there uh, so on and so forth which would mimic pretty much what would happen in an emergency situation so uh, being able to purify that much more water rather than having just a little personal water filter definitely bodes much better for me in the summertime Next item that I want to talk to you about is insect repellent. And uh, those of you that have spent even minimal amount of time in the field realize how annoying these critters can be and deter us from our mission. But it's not only that, uh, even this year, we're having record amounts of Lyme disease being spread by these ticks, uh, other viruses that these mosquitoes are bringing in. So being able to basically have some type of barrier uh, between you and them that'll bode a lot better for you in the field and hopefully keep them off of you. Uh, it's definitely a must in your summertime go bag. Also keep in mind that this is a natural recipe that I've been using for the last 10 years. If you are interested in that, go ahead and take a look at my article. I have it hyperlinked in there and you'll have access to that recipe if you're interested. Next up, we have a ripstop blanket. Now what I like about these ripstop blankets is that they're super lightweight and offer the multi-purpose. So there is a lot of options that I can utilize in an emergency situ situation with one of these blankets. Uh, primarily, I am using it on the ground as a barrier uh, between me and my dogs and the ground. Once again, keeping those critters off of us and uh, basically trying to keep the annoyance to a minimum. But of course, in a pinch, you're talking about shelter building. You, are, uh, you can utilize this as a poncho and pretty much you're limited by your experience and your imagination. Sunblock. Okay, I'm not a very big fan of sunblock, but uh, unfortunately, there's times where I do need to use it, especially when we're spending a lot of time on the water, whether we're kayaking, canoeing, boating, fishing, any of those things. Uh, the sun is pretty much reflecting off that water and beaming on you, and uh, before you know it, you can have a serious sunburn that's gonna take you out of commission, wreak havoc on your health. So being able to apply a thin layer uh, every once in a while when you know you're going to have that extra exposure is definitely that'll, something that'll bode uh, very well for you, whether recreationally or in an emergency. Next item that I want to discuss is mosquito netting. This is actually a military issue, which is where I uh, pretty much became uh, enamored with the uh, protection that something this simple and this light actually offers. Once again, multi-purpose, as you can tell, this would make an excellent fishing net in a pinch. But more importantly, where you're util utilizing it to get some good R&R, &R, uh, be able to get some good sleep at night, and once again, protect from those critters that are trying to spread those viruses to us. Next up, we have some fishing tackle. So I live in an area where in the summer months I have access to uh, excellent fishing spots, both salt water and fresh water. Now in my go bags, I always keep an emergency fishing kit but it's not as elaborate as this because it's really just there for survival in an emergency and in a pinch if I need to uh, dig through some ice and do some ice fishing or whatever the case may be, I'm uh, prepared. But in the summertime, knowing that uh, the chances of me fishing uh, go up a uh, hundredfold, there I definitely want a little bit more of an, inc an inclusive kit when it comes to my fishing tackle. So once again, prepare for the area around you, the type of species that are around you, and uh, you'll boat a lot better in... Uh, recreationally and of course in an emergency situation okay next up we have uh, one of my solar charging kits and now of course keep in mind that as long as the sun is out it doesn't really matter what season it is but in the summer you're going to get those lengthier sunny days uh, and be able to actually utilize these type of uh, portable solar chargers uh, to their maximum so uh, in the, in the winter time it may take me two three days to charge up uh, my external battery packs to be able to utilize for my devices. But in the summertime, you're talking about eight hours and you're pretty much good to go. 
so it totally behooves me to bring the extra weight and the extra battery packs because I know that I'm going to be able to actually utilize them as opposed to them just being dead weight uh, on in those uh, dark uh, winter months, so to speak, and even fall months where uh, the sun isn't very prevalent, at least in my area. All right, sandals or uh, trekking shoes. Once again, plethora of uh, uses, especially uh, once again, sitting off off the tri side of the trail. If you have damp socks, if you're getting blisters, so on and so forth, might be a good idea, especially in the summer months, to be able to switch to these. But more importantly, I utilize these for water activities. If I'm on the trail and I need to wade through a body of water for whatever, uh, whether it's the least path of resistance to get me to where I need to be, or if it's just to get closer to the fish uh, or to a fishing spot where I know I'll have a better chance, I wanna wade into that water. Well, I don't really wanna go in there with my standard boots or my primary boots or hiking shoes because I don't wanna get them soaked because that'll take me out of commission for a while. But being able to change into these that dry very fast and at the same time offer that layer of protection from rocks and other nails and fish hooks and whatever might be out there in the environment that could easily take us out of commission and wreak havoc on our chances of survival. Okay, next up we have a hammock. Once again, very lightweight. It's made of a parachute type material, ripstop material. So once again, plethora of uses in a survival situation. But more importantly for me in those summer months, I have various uh, backpacking tents and all sorts of different shelters, but uh, it gets very hot. And for me, I end up getting a very uncomfortable sleep at night, if any sleep at all. So being able to once again, be off the ground away from the critters and uh, being able to be comfortable in a breezy area and then once again, utilizing my ripstop blanket as well as my mosquito netting to make a formidable shelter keeps me comfortable. Everything is lightweight. I have multi-purpose and more importantly, I get that much needed R&R, &R, uh, especially if this was an emergency scenario. Now I cannot uh, overemphasize the uh, need and the importance of water, especially in the summertime months. Now what I do like to bring with me is a hydration pack. All of my rucks and go bags have a compartment where I could feed the actual hose through and be able to have access to my water without even having to stop. So it keeps me on the move, keeps me hydrated, something less that I have to think about. What's great too about the water gathering aspect is I could combine it with my water purifier. And when I do get to a water source, I can go ahead, purify the water, replenish and fill up this relatively big um, hydration pack and know that I'm good to go when it comes to water. Okay, navigation aids. I like keeping my GPS with me, especially in my summer go bag. Uh, in all of my go bags, I have uh, compasses. If I have uh, maps or lucky enough to get maps in the area that I'm operating in, I also have those uh, topographical maps. But in a pinch, and especially in the summer months, winter months, the uh, vegetation is relatively dormant. And in the summer months, we have the uh, tree can canopies and everything blossoming all over the place where you could pretty much spin around in a circle and get lost. So it's nice to have this uh, GPS unit where I could mark my waypoints, always know where I am, always know where I'm coming from and how to get back. And uh, that bodes very well. The other reason why it's uh, a good choice for me, especially in my summer go bag, is because of me carrying my solar charger charging kit, which I know that I could replenish the battery uh, pretty much on demand. And in the winter time, that generally is not an option. Battery runs out, and now this is relatively useless, so you better have your map and compass as your backup. Talcum powder or petroleum jelly, or and or petroleum jelly. Now what I like about this, as you can imagine, while we're out there in the field, uh, getting very sweaty in these summer months, clothes are up and up, rubbing up against you, uh, you're getting wet from uh, sweating and then drying up from the sun, so it could cause a lot of skin irritation. Being able to uh, spread some talcum powder uh, on the chest, thighs, legs, armpits, uh, so on and so forth, any place basically where you're getting irritation goes a long way in uh, combating that irritation, which would allow you to operate and at the same time, hopefully not get any type of uh, infection. So uh, always a good idea, especially in these summer months to have some of this along with you. Okay, next up we have sunglasses. Uh, now, once again, even in the winter time, especially when there's a uh, snowy terrain, I do wear sunglasses because it helps out with the glare. But in the summertime when you have those strong UV rays uh, hitting you in the face, uh, getting you disoriented, so on and so forth, it's a really good idea to have a pair of sunglasses. Uh, try to get something that is polarized so that they work well in the water for you and help you spot certain schools of fish and uh, pretty much other things that are below the surface of the water. So once again, something that I find that is a must for my uh, summer go bag. Okay, next up we have a bush cover. Once again, it's giving you protection from the sun 
It's giving you protection from the elements, things falling from the tree, landing on your head, giving you protection from critters that could easily get embedded in your hair. And uh, it also keeps the sweat out of my eyes, uh, which is uh, certainly a plus. Uh, keep in mind that you want something lightweight, uh, something that does have ventilation holes. So uh, not only are you getting uh, some airflow on your head, which is important, but also when it does get soaked, it makes it that much easier to dry. All right, so once again, keep in mind that this is not by any means an all-inclusive list of the contents of my go bag. Uh, this might be 5% of the contents of my go bag, where the rest remains pretty much standard regardless of the season. Uh, once again, this is what works for me. This is what I choose to carry. We all have different experiences. We all live in different places. We all have different choices in gear and different budgets. And what I'm hoping to do is just to stimulate some thought processes for you to uh, reanalyze your gear and make sure you're good to go regardless of the season that you're operating in because we never know when that emergency is going to happen. So remember, perfect practice always makes perfect. This is Helder. I hope that you found this information useful.